It's Harvest Festival in rural England at the turn of the second millennium. We're in Craswell, one of the biggest parishes in England and one of the most sparsely populated. It has 147 residents spread over about 5,000 acres. In Norman times, the area was part of the US Lacey 100. This is Craswell. As the crow flies, the city of Hereford lies 13 miles northeast, Hay on Wye 6 miles northwest, and Abergavenny 13 miles south. The Welsh border lies to the west. The name Craswell derives from Cresswolds, the hills where Cress grows. Sure enough, wild watercress is abundant here, around the pure springs that emerge from the old red sandstone rocks. These sandstone beds were laid down 350 million years ago, south of the equator, and rose up higher than the Himalayas as they were pushed north. As they migrated to our latitude, they eroded to the settled and familiar old mountains we now know. The valley has been settled at least since the Bronze Age. Local inhabitants were a mixed community for whom there were times of harsh Anglo-Welsh conflict. In Norman times, the Earls of Hereford, while allowing the inhabitants to retain Celtic customs, required in return that they act as vanguard and rearguard during forays into Wales. Many of the farms still have Welsh names, as it would have been the predominant language during long periods in history. On the eastern margins of the parish, there is a burial cyst from the Bronze Age, similar to one displayed in Hereford Museum, which was found nearby. Craswell is a valley community. At its head lies a cluster of springs known as the Red Dingle. Here, the lovely River Mono rises and runs through the parish. Many springs and dingles feed it from the valley sides and it grows rapidly. At first it runs east and the upper valley loses the sun early. But then the valley widens and the river turns more southerly. The lower valley is richer with gentler slopes and fields divided by deep wooded dingles. There is plenty of scope for walkers here because the parish is crisscrossed by waymarked footpaths through this beautiful farmland and beyond, up into the hills and the old mountain road, so routes can be chosen for all ambitions. There was a burst of building work in Craswell between 1450 and 1600, fuelled by the late medieval wool trade. The valley is graced by a series of fine vernacular farmsteads from this period, with substantial outbuildings from the same period. Except in the lower reaches, these fine houses occupy the sunnier, south-facing slopes. Their frames are pegged together from heavy oak cruck timbers, and their thick walls infilled with rubble. On the other side of the valley, Less favoured by the sun, another wave of building took place in the 18th and 19th centuries. The quarries that supplied the walls and stone tiles for the roofs of all the houses and barns in the valley are still in evidence. Some of them have been reopened recently. Farming income would have generated the quarrying and building activity in the valley and other allied trades. In the 1871 census, there were three alehouses in the parish, as well as a blacksmith, a cobbler, a carpenter, two corn mills and a woolen mill. Agricultural products have always been at the heart of the economy. In the 13th century, the wool revenue was reaped by the Grand Montine monks, who had a priory in the upper reaches of the valley. This religious order was sponsored by the de Lacy family, but it proved too austere to survive and was abandoned by 1441. 
The year still revolves around sheep farming, with lambing in the spring the most demanding and important time. This orphan lamb is being adopted onto a ewe whose lamb has died. This involves great skill in dressing the live lamb in the skin of the dead one, encouraging the mother to accept the lamb and keeping them together in a confined space for 24 hours. The adoptive mother then believes the lamb to be her own, mainly through her sense of smell, and will therefore suckle and care for it. The secondary dressed skin can then be removed and bonding will proceed normally. Some farmers graze the open hill and later in the year the sheep are brought down for sorting and shearing. The valley's main output is lamb and the breeding stock of both cattle and sheep. Grass, the predominant vegetation in upland Britain, cannot be digested by humans with our single stomach. Instead, Ruminant cattle and sheep perform that service for us and deliver slow-grown meat, which is both delicious and ecologically sound. Three generations ago, one Craswell farmer used to save up his wool crop for three or four years and buy another farm on the proceeds. Now the value of wool barely covers the cost of shearing it. This shows how relative values of agricultural produce have changed. Wool, like everything else, has come under tremendous pressure. It's part of an income that's now a fraction of what it was two generations ago. The locals remember the old days. In 1966, I suppose, uh -huh. 65, 66, yes. and yes, we came here in 62. Uh -huh. So we've got one more year to do 40 years. Yeah. And there it is, 1998, wasn't it? Three brothers came to mend the bells at the Cleddock. And two stayed round here yeah. and one went back. back. <laughs> Up there, that is my mother and father, yes. Well, I said he was 56 when he died. Um, yes. he, he, he couldn't have been much more than 51 or two there. Well, the both of them, they were only talking about between them. Many locals are descended from a single family of bellcasters who came from Shepton Mallet in the late 18th century to mend the Cloddock church bells. There were 15 siblings in a single generation who all lived, married and farmed nearby. I can remember grandfather talking about uh, the gang shearing and barn shearing that they used to move round from farm to farm and the thrashing. Yeah. Well, it was that was added to the community spirit. Yes. Much more than plodding along on your own. Yeah. And maybe yeah. having a contractor in to do your side of gin. Well, he may not be part of the community. Uh. Would come in from further afield these days. Yeah. Half a day and gone yes. again, and you're back. To on your own, you know, it's it's a different way of life yeah. Yeah. to really a generation different. ago. Yeah. Yeah. And going back again to the wise parts, going out to work, you're spending a tremendous amount of your day actually living on your own yes. and working alone. Yes. It's very solitary. The area abounds in genealogies of farms and families who have lived and worked together over generations. They say it is why Craswell has a reputation for being such a friendly place. Before the Second World War, most farms were rented. Revenue from agriculture was so poor that the farm would pay the rent and the women folk earned the housekeeping by selling poultry, eggs and dairy produce. The women would catch a bus from Forest Mill, taking their produce to Abergavenny Market every week. They would leave home very early in the morning or even carry a load down to the bus stop the evening before. All the locals agree that the coming of motorised transport and haulage has been the single biggest change. The men used to walk the cattle and sheep to local markets.
Entertainment was homespun, and Craswell had a church and three chapels at one time. A large part of the life of the community revolves around raising money for the church. This small building stands alone at the top of the valley on a breast of hillside where the soil is too thin for burials. There is a cockpit in the churchyard, now overgrown with trees, and against the back wall of the church is a fives court, so religion and entertainment were never far apart in Craswell. The door to the main body of the church at Craswell is never locked. Please go in. It has a simple charm with some carved and painted beams and a small west gallery. West galleries were built for the church musicians and in an early inventory of Craswell Church, it boasted two cellos. The first school in Criswell was in the vestry at the church here, and children paid a penny a week to attend. The school itself was built lower down the valley in 1876 and closed in 1957. In 1978, Criswell's parishioners gave lambs and goods for sale to raise enough funds to buy this disused schoolroom from the county council. It is now our village hall and is used by the Young Farmers Club for the parish party and other community events. The church continues to be a focus for the life of the community. A variety of social events throughout the year raise funds to maintain the fabric of the church and contribute to the annual quota required by the diocese. Since the early 90s, concerts for Craswell have been given three times a year. These are held in spring, summer and autumn, are advertised widely and well attended. They are of a very high standard with both professional and amateurs and students from the top music schools. This has enlivened the fundraising in the parish. A barbecue and fair is held in the summer in the grounds of the church. Later in the year, the Harvest Supper and Whist Drives provide other chances to get together and to raise money for the annual Christmas party.
families of the parish all turn out for these events, and at the Christmas party, punch and mince pies are served, and there are singing and games for everybody and presents for every child. In a parish where families are so widely scattered, these popular events provide very important points of social contact. They are great fun and enjoyed by everyone. As farming incomes decline, while church communities diminish, when rural life is so changeable, the pleasure we take in our immediate surroundings and neighbours has never been more important.